Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, myself Chirag. In this video, I am going to discuss about Kerberos version 5 message exchange, topic of network security. This video is explained using the animation. So let's check the outline of this video. The first topic is what is Kerberos? The second one is how many version of Kerberos protocol? And the third one is Kerberos version 5 message exchange. So before start this video, So let's start with the first topic. What is Kerberos? Kerberos is a network authentication protocol. Kerberos allow nodes communicating over a non-secure network on the basis of ticket. For the security purpose, all the nodes prove their identity to one another in a secure manner on a non-secure network. Next, different version of Kerberos protocol. There are two versions of Kerberos protocol. The first one is Kerberos version 4 and the second one is Kerberos version 5. If you want to learn about Kerberos version 4, then click on above i button. So in this video, I am going to discuss about Kerberos version 5 message exchange. First of all, I will explain the message exchange scenario through the animation. For example, there is one client. Client want to access a services from the server. But client cannot connect with the server without authentication. So now client send a request to the authentication server. An authentication server check the authentication of the client. If client is authenticated, then authentication server accept the request. Then authentication server send a reply message along with ticket to the client. Now client will accept and store that ticket. That ticket which is received by the client, it is used to access the ticket granting server. So now client send this ticket to the ticket granting server and also send a request for the ticket to access the server V. So now ticket granting server accept that client ticket and generate a new ticket of server and send to the client. Now client will accept and store that ticket. After that client will send this ticket to the server V and server V will accept that ticket and connection is established between the server and client. Then after server V will send an encrypted message to the client. Client will decrypt that message and accept the connection. Then after client send an encrypted message to the server and request for the services. Server will decrypt that message and provide the requested services to the client. So this is the message exchange scenario for the understanding purpose. Now discuss Kerberos version 5 message exchange in detail step by step. So now in first step client will send a request to the authentication server. In that request message there are six different values are included. So first one is options. It indicates used to request that certain flex be set in the return ticket. Flex like initial, pre-authentication, hardware authentication, renewable and many more. The second value of the message is IDC. It indicates the identity of client. The third one is RIAM C. It indicates the RIAM of user. So it means the RIAM of client. The fourth one is IDTGS. It indicates the ID of ticket granting server. So here why IDTGS is sent by the client to the authentication server? Because client want to request it for the ticket of TGS from the authentication server. The next one is times. Times indicate used by the client to request the following time setting in the ticket. In times, there are three options. The first one is from start time for the requested ticket. The second one is till. It indicates the expiration time for the requested ticket. And the third one is R time. It means the requested renew till time of the ticket. And the last one is nonce. Nonce is a random value to avoid the reply attack. After client request, the second step is authentication server send a reply to the client. In reply message, there are four values. The first one is RIAMC, the second one is IDC, and the third one is ticket TGS and one encrypted message sent by the authentication server to the client. In these four values, RIAMC and IDC was sent by the client to the authentication server. The third one is ticket TGS. Ticket TGS is an encrypted form. Client cannot decrypt that ticket because ticket TGS is encrypted using the KTGS key. KTGS is shared between the ticket granting server and authentication server. So client will decrypt the last portion of the message which was encrypted using the key KC. The key KC is shared between the client and authentication server. So client will decrypt that last portion of the reply message and get the session key between the client and the ticket granting server which is KC TGS. 
it is shared between the client and the ticket granting server. And the next fields are times, nonce, and IDTGS, which was sent by the client to the authentication server. And one field is included by the authentication server, which is RIAM of TGS. So after second step, client will get two important things. The first one is ticket TGS, and the second one is the session key between the client and the ticket granting server. Now, in third step, client will send a request to the ticket granting server. In that requested message, there are six values in which options, times, and nonce we have already discussed in previous step. The second value is IDV. It indicates the identity of server V. So here, there is one question. Why client will send server's identity to the ticket granting server? Because client wants a ticket of the server V to access the services from server V. Another field of the requested message is Ticket TGS. So here Ticket TGS is encrypted using the KTGS key. KTGS is shared between the authentication server and the ticket granting server. So here ticket granting server will decrypt that ticket and get the session key between the client and the ticket granting server which is KCTGS. It is shared between the client and the ticket granting server. And the remaining fields of the ticket is stored into the ticket granting server. The last portion of the requested message is Authenticator C. The purpose of Authenticator C is to prove the authentication of client to the ticket granting server. So Authenticator C is also in encrypted form. So now Authenticator C is decrypted by the ticket granting server, which is encrypted using the session key KCTGS. KCTGS is already received from the ticket TGS. So after the decryption of Authenticator C, Ticket granting server will match the IDC and RMC with the ticket TGS field. If both are same, it means the client is authenticated. So after that, ticket granting server will reply to the client. In that reply message, there are four fields RMC, IDC, ticket V, and one encrypted portion. So here RMC and IDC, which was already shared by the client. The third portion of the reply message is ticket V. Ticket V is in encrypted form. So here ticket V is encrypted using the key KV. Key KV is shared between the server V and the ticket granting server. So client cannot decrypt that ticket V. The last portion of the reply message which is encrypted using the key KCTGS. So key KCTGS is shared between the client and the ticket granting server. So client can decrypt that last portion of the reply message. So client will decrypt that message using the KCTGS and get the new session key KCV. So here KCV is shared between the client and the server V. And the remaining fields are times, nonce2 and IDV which was sent by the client to the ticket granting server. And then one field RIAMV which was included by the ticket granting server in reply message. So after fourth step client have server's ticket. So now in fifth step client will send a request to the server V. In that requested message there are three fields. Options, Ticket V and Authenticator C. The first field is Option. I have already discussed in step number 1. The next field is Ticket V. Ticket V is encrypted using the key KV. KV is shared between the server V and the ticket granting server. So now server V will decrypt that ticket using the KKV. After decryption of ticket, server will get a session key KCV. KCV is used between the client and server V. And the remaining fields of the ticket is stored into the server. The last portion of the message is Authenticator C, which is also in encrypted form. So Authenticator C is encrypted using the session key KCV. Now server V is already received session key KCV from the ticket V. So Authenticator C is decrypted by the server V using the session key KCV. After decryption of Authenticator C, the first two values of Authenticator C IDC and RMC is matched with ticket V. If both the values are same, it means the client is authenticated. In that requested message, the authenticator includes several new fields. The first field is subkey. Here subkey means sub session key, which is generated from the session key KCV. It is generated by the client. Each new connection has a new sub session key. If the field sub session key is omitted, the session key from the ticket KCV is used. And the last field of the authenticator C is sequence number. 
Sequence number is used to detect reply attack when the client and server communication is going on. In six step, server will send a reply message to the client. The purpose of this message is to check the confidentiality of the message because the message is encrypted using the session key KCV which is shared between the client and the server V. So after six step, client and server will communicate with each other and server will provide the requested services to the client. So this is all about Kerberos version 5 message exchange. For further discussion, you can join my telegram group Chirag Balodia. Link is given in description. So if you like this video, please hit the like button and share with others. Don't forget to subscribe my channel. Follow me on social media. All the links are given in description. And all the video materials are available in my blog chiragbalodia.com.